Hello, hello everyone. Can you hear me? I will actually, I uh, will let you unmute yourself. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. So today, Hi. yes. Hi, Aya. Hi, Carl. Hi, AJ, Lucy, Hamiz, Reem. All right, so I will also enable recording. All right. So guys, eh, just to also to ask you to um, account for your time that you took today to join this meeting, can you please post in the chat your Discord ID so we could uh, award you your voting points. So we will have this record of you being here today and we can uh, give you the voting points that you just I mean, I would just like to ask you to introduce yourself to everyone joining uh, from uh, the university if you would introduce Crypto Chicks and yourself and the hackathon as well, just give a brief introduction. Thank you, um, Aya, thank you. Uh, so guys, we're here today to actually uh, walk some of the new people that who just joined us for the first time. Uh, and yes, thank you so much, Aya, the introduction is needed. So I'm, uh, my name is Elina Sinelnikova. I am a founder and CEO of uh, Crypto Chicks, which is a nonprofit organization that uh, takes care of um, people's and uh, mostly is female and youth education in blockchain and AI. So we create the opportunities uh, for our crowd and we also help them to uh, create their businesses to move forward in their careers in, in this area. Um, so this is what CryptoChicks is about. And this hackathon is also in line with our idea to help people to create their own businesses using new technologies and to take these businesses further and developing them into their businesses or maybe to find a team where they can you know, advance their careers, um, also to connect to our community, to our sponsors, find new jobs. So all this is done for you. Thank you for that. Yeah and, I, and, yeah, and I would like to add, hi, it's Natalia here, everybody hi. also from Toronto. I'd like to add that, you know, sometimes it's like daunting, go where, like, where do I start? So this mm -hmm. is a good platform. Just if you think you have an idea, uh, so you don't have to be a proficient programmer, uh, but you think you have an idea and you'd like to maybe try to implement it, this way you can try to do it. That's all it is. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be a final product but it's a process, a learning process, and we help you through it. And you can meet uh, people that have sort of similar ideas that can help you evolve it into something bigger. So, you know, every business starts from an idea. And so this is an opportunity to explore like where you wanna be and how does that work? And we'll be he here to facilitate that process for you. Yes, and we also, uh, we put uh, $10,000 to the pot of the prize money. So people who build their projects can be awarded because we're going to be at, at the, uh, at our hackathon, we're going to be having a vote and to select the best projects and this best project will be sharing uh, a prize fund. We also will be having an event called Spread the Thon, which we hold after June 30th. We don't have a date yet, but this is in essence, we're going to be telling the world about this applications oh. that you guys and projects and ideas that you develop um uh, yeah, we're also right now currently raising money uh, into the prize fund. So uh, any sponsorship, contribution, any donations and everything is actually resulting in the uh, voting power for this uh, mm, hackathon. So let's say, for example, if you would like your uh, application to be funded, upvoted and everything, we encourage you to um, ask your friends and family to donate to the prize pot and therefore they can vote for your application and then, you know, bump, bump up your chances, you know, or just contribute to our community as well. So this is a community managed event. We are using blockchain technology and technology called DAO, decentralized autonomous, autonomous organization to manage all the voting power inside the community, voting and so on. And thank you so much for joining today. So, um, Aya, would you uh, please maybe introduce your community and uh, people here? Okay, so yes. basically my name is Aya Aid. I am the ambassador of the United Arab Emirates and I have people participating from uh, the American University of Sharjah. Um, those people are going to participate in the virtual hackathon as well. 
So I would really appreciate a brief introduction about the Decentraland and how they can join and form teams as well, because uh, we're fairly new and um, the students are very eager to learn more about the blockchain technology and uh, the, hack the virtual hackathon, which is going to take place on the 29th of May. And there is also a workshop after this. Uh, I just want to add so that people would stay and uh, learn more. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Aya. So uh, I will ju just uh, put for the new people, I would like to start from the very beginning. And the very beginning would be our website. So I, I just shared, shared my screen. So here, uh, if you haven't signed up for the hackathon yet, you can do there uh, on this website, soshackathon.com and click on the register button. You can also join our Discord community. And this is the messenger that we are uh, getting all, all, the, all the information to you through these uh, channels. So in uh, these channels... Add, Elena, Discord is not available in the UAE. Like we cannot put the location because I think it's only for specific countries. The Discord is not available at all. So like if you... No, if you, you, can, Discord... you can... I think you can see this, but I don't know about the contribution because when you go to choose the country, UAE is not there. Uh, what do you mean the contribution? So the... Uh, the donation so basically to, no, no 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 so basically uh -huh. when you make an account yes they would ask you to choose the country and it is not there oh okay I so i i i think i think it's not like it's it has nothing to do with the, i mean our contribution so once you join our channel we don't care which no. country you're oh. from like from the within this course i don't know elena i think you're saying that she, you can't they can't actually download the app is that what you're saying you can't yeah, i tried to access it <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, like you will you would not go further on like you have to specify a country you cannot go proceed without specifying the country if, uh, but if you specify in some other country what happens i tried that it worked uh -huh. but i don't know if that's okay yeah i think it's okay yeah it's completely yeah. okay and thank you for asking this question if if you i am i'm not sure why you would not be here on the discord i think we have to send a message to discord because mm -hmm. probably they just didn't include this country I, I'm, I'm not sure but uh definitely once you get to our discord so we don't kind of we don't even use this field country in there we have you you specify your country on our registration form when you go and register yeah. to the website yeah so this is all matters for us and we have the record that you are from this, so I'm uh, just, from the united, just, united just arab the, emirates yeah legit just the logistics though if you can't connect uh, maybe we because this hackathon is running maybe you just put canada because we are kind of it's coming from the whole yeah. you know yeah so just maybe put when you ask about the country you refer to the hackathon organizers in mm -hmm. the event uh, and you can put Canada in, in there and hopefully that will work. But please let us know if there's any issues with Discord because this is kind of critical uh, in terms of the platform of registering for, you know, uh, personally, then finding teammates and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe the people who are listening could yeah go through this. And afterwards, if there's any questions or issues, we will find a way to accommodate you guys. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And once you get into Discord, you see your message will appear. Actually, like when you show up, you see Lulu just showed up. So this mm -hmm. is message that actually generated by Discord server. And you see they all are different, very creative ones. But this is just an indicator that somebody um, actually joined our server, right? So today we see, you see that three people joined just mm -hmm. as of today. Um, yeah, so and you, you can see the whole bunch of announcement about our events, like our speakers in announcement channels. <clears throat> but if you're looking for a team or you're looking for teammates, the first place you need to look uh, is just scrolling down and you see all the teams that right now emerged from this hackathon. So all of them are looking for uh, new team members, right? Just go to any teams, read the information, what this team is about and just send them like post them your message here if you would like to join any mm -hmm. of them and for example Decentraland here is represented by Carl so you if you would like to build your business on Decentraland and we're going to be talking about that so this is there is a team uh, about that here right so you can join mm -hmm. here but it's not necessarily that you have to join this specific team right so you can join any of them right so we have many many right now 
if you have your own idea that you want to build, uh, we have here, uh, you see there is this admins per people, right? And you can ask any of the admins to create a group for you, to create a team for you. So, so you can sorry, recruit members. Go? Where would they go? Uh, they uh, you see that these are people in yellow admins. Um, uh, right on the right yeah, side. Yeah, 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 on yeah, the yeah, right yeah. side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, just message one of them and say like here in the message say like Elon, can you please create us a team? Okay. Right. And with this name, right? And and mm -hmm. we'll create a team for you, and then you can recruit members into your team here in mm -hmm. Discord. All right, so also the very useful channels are um, from uh, point of view, there's uh, frequently asked questions. So if you have any question, of course, you're welcome to ask any of the uh, admins or any of the mentors uh, here, but also check out our uh, frequently asked questions section. So we, we already posted some of the answers here. Useful links. You find all the links. If you, if you, for example, would like to see what events, like uh, what talks are coming up, uh, for example, so there is this uh, SOS Hack calendar that you can open and see all the events that we have planned for you. Like, for example, right now at 11 a.m., we have this introductory for the SOS uh, Hackathon, right? So followed by uh, workshops from, from workshop from Trek. And then we'll be in the evening. Uh, we probably will be wee hours in you, uh, yeah, United Arab Emirates. Right? Yeah. So, it's the, <laughs> but we have all the workshops recorded, right? Mm -hmm. And here on this channel, you can also see where are they recorded. For example, all pitches are recorded, and there's link here uh, into the ideas. All the uh, the workshops. Actually, you can go into um, SOS Hack Live. Uh, and uh, so there is this, um, the, the whole web page that we post, all our previous call that we recorded. Uh, we also posted on YouTube, uh, right, as well? So yeah, so they, they post it on YouTube, but this, this is the page that we kind of uh, organize it in, right? Mm -hmm. You see this is the pre hackathon workshops that were already held, right? So now blockchain for registration. So build your hack in Decentraland. We have also AI in education. So all of these topics, we invited experts to talk about it. We mm -hmm. also had a hackathon idea pitches. And at the end of this meeting, I would like to hold some of you guys pitches. If you would like to pitch your idea, yeah. So these are these are the recorded that it goes into. So you see, for example, there's teams that are already uh, forming and they're pitching their ideas to recruit new team members. So you can listen to their pitches and understand mm -hmm. more what this idea is about, right? Mm -hmm. So and we also post all our community calls. So if you miss any, you can also watch the recording. So here in this web page, and information about this is all in this useful links. Um, channel on the discourses Discord, yeah. yes there's lots of information available <laughs> same we post uh, for all our community calls for example here you see we post the information about the community yeah, the call we post uh, information about our pre-hack webinars oh and by the way you also mm -hmm. if you cannot join zoom for some reason you know have a technical difficulty you can always watch our presentation live so here you see right now as we go in we are streaming the live presentation here on this website as well mm -hmm. right on this link any questions on that so far i'm giving lots of information right now I think they're good. Guys, if you have any questions, please drop it in the chat. Yes, box. please, please, please uh, drop in the chat or unmute your microphone. Please ask questions if you have any. All right, so we have some questions in the chat right now. No, it's only the Discord. Yes, and also, guys, uh, so we are, uh, because this is a decentralized organization that we are forming, we will be giving you all, all who participate in the Hackathon Devoting Power, and every uh, webinar you participate, every community call, we would like to uh, account for and give you more voting power for each participation. So therefore, every time you join our Zoom, please post in the group chat, please post your Discord ID so we can know who you are and who joined this meeting, right? So it will be easier for us to understand. So just to be clear, yeah, yeah, sorry, just, uh, yes. their voting power, they're gonna use 
uh, when the competition time is on, so like they can vote for whichever business they want, right? Exactly, exactly. And it yes. can be for, for their own business as well. It can be, yes, for their own business. But you see, and the more, more you participate in the community, more you the participate more, in the goal, yeah. more, more power you have actually to mm -hmm. upvote your own business. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think this is uh, fair, right? So, yeah. because yes, this is more, and that's how decentralization works, right? Mm -hmm. So we're giving power to people, not for the judges to decide. We will have a panel of the judges just to gather their opinion, but actually voting is going to be done by people. All right, so that's uh, uh, also the channels that I would like to cover a little bit, looking for a team and looking for a teammates, right? So if you're looking uh, people to join your project, to join your idea, this is a channel you're looking for teammates is for you. So make sure that you post there and you post often so people would not miss your idea. And also it's a good thing about posting in Discord, we have a bot that running behind the scene that counting all your messages. So more you post in the Discord, more voting power you get. Look at that. <laughs> so there you go. All right, same for looking for a team. So if you came here to join some team and you don't know, and this is getting lots and lots of people like this. And right now, sometimes they're getting lost and they say like, oh, I don't know who to join. Yes, post your information here. People who are hunting, like head hunting for good, uh, you know, for mm -hmm. people to join. Yes, they will find you here as well. So don't be, don't be shy, post your information here. It up, uh, um, bump up your voting power and plus you can find a team as well. Yes, and as I say as well, so we have the teams under the teams category, you have all these teams that formed so far, we will have uh, many, many more. So please um, look through them if you want to join the team or if you have an idea, please let one of the admins on the right side in the yellow know that you need to create such a team so to find your teammates. Any questions? All right. Uh, oh, so I've got one. What's the difference between the hashtag and the at tag? Uh, all right. So this very good question. So hashtag indicates a channel. So if you would like to uh, refer like some some channel, let's say that in here I say um, like QB, for example, this is the, the project, right? So and I post it. So people who uh, click in here, they can re, uh, uh, link and go straight to QB, all right? So this is just the fast link that you provide, right? And the hashtag. If you uh, do, for example, um, you see the announcements uh, that we made, for example, we do, do at everyone, it means that everyone gets notified about this message. If you would like to uh, tag any particular person, for example, or community leaders, all community leaders, or for example, right now, I would like to send it to attention of Natalia uh, Villarreal. So I, I say like, hi, Natalia. Uh, so she will receive a message about it in her own, like she will receive indication that there is, um, her name was tagged and she needs to pay attention to it. So if you'd like to take a, uh, get attention of every, any particular group or person, so this is you use the ad. Does it answer your question? Mm -hmm. Sort of. What about the, oh, so the ad is for a person? The ad and... is for a group or a person. And this hashtag is for a channel. OK, maybe explain channel. All right, channel is, for example, there is a team channel, right? Like Naboo, Decentraland, so QB, there's team channels. There are also ch channels, for example, announcement or introduction. Uh, so for example, I would like to tell people that they can see useful links in the channel, useful links. And I will see the message, like everyone, uh, uh, you can see um, all useful links in useful links channel, right? So, so first of all, everyone will receive notification about this message. But then when they come here to Discord, and see this message, then can click to the useful at like sorry uh, hashtag useful links, in and which takes them directly to the useful links channel. They don't need to look for this channel here, 
right? So, so this is hashtag is a direct link, whereas at is a notification that you get in your messenger. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah. Andrew, does it answer your question? Did you hear me? Yes, yeah, have you, have I you heard, heard me? you. Um, okay. Uh, so carry on. You're doing a great job. I'm just. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, th this is uh, yeah. If if uh, if you didn't understand, uh, please try to maybe rephrase your question so I could uh, <clears throat> answer it better. Well, to find my um, Discord at that's what's that called an id or uh... like for example andrew I, if i um so you are andrew here okay so no, I'm you, over, and. over and over all right i cannot oh maybe that's uh like let's say that i do it in announcements i cannot find you here Oh, you ambassador. So, do you know? Do you know your Discord ID? I thought it was at Overend. I cannot find you here. Let me see. No, you're not. I just um, sent it in the chat line about. Three minutes ago. Okay, let me see. At over and in the chat line of uh, Zoom. Yeah, I uh, I just found it. All right, here. Yeah, I found you. Right. So over. I'm not sure why it doesn't resolve you here. <laughs> ah, here, there, there, right? So now that when I, when I send you this message, you will get a notification. Right. There. So that is it for the, the ad. So, so you could get a notification. Right. When I post hashtag, all right? So let's say nobody gets notification, but when they can see my message, they can click to this link directly and go into this channel, Ambassadors. Does it make sense? So I have several hashtags depending on different roles and different groups I'm in. No, it's not hashtag the groups, it's hashtag uh, channels, okay? For the oh, groups yeah. you use at, for different groups you use at, for different channels you, you use hashtag. So groups are um, on the right side of the Discord, here, you see, there's the groups, admins, mentors, community leaders. So these are the groups. And the channels are on the left side. So these are the channels. All right. So you, when you see use at, you use the right side. And when you use hashtag, you use the left side. Does it answer your question now? Excellent. So I All have right. several hashtags or just one hashtag for everything on the left hand side. Each, no, you don't have any hashtags. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, because this it. the hashtag belongs to the uh, uh, channels, right? You don't have any yours channels, right? You don't have any hashtags, but you have your at, right? You have at, you are community leader. You are at, you are uh, over brand. So that's, uh, you have the ads. Does it make Thank sense you. now? All right, great. Excellent. All right. So we're moving on. And there was a question about the central land. So we are engaging a blockchain in any areas and many, many areas. So one of the areas that we engage blockchain is, is a virtual reality that built on the blockchain. It's called Decentraland. Uh, we hold in some of our talks there. And we, we thought it would be awesome during this COVID-19 situation when we all sitting at home, you know, maybe joining Zoom. Uh, so the Decentraland opens up a little bit uh, of, you know, freedom and space like in, in emerging into a virtual reality. Uh, I, right now I'm going to just uh, share my screen. 
and walk you through uh, the like Decentraland introduction. So who of you never like is not familiar with Decentraland at all? Raise your hand. I think you, most of the people that joined from uh, from, from from from, from uh, United yeah. Emirates, yes. All right, so then I will not uh, lose time on this question, yeah. and we go right into the demonstration of it. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen, and this is how you get into a Decentraland. You go to decentraland.org on your desktop. So you cannot do it from your phone because it's not available from the phone yet. So you need to use your desktop computer or laptop computer uh, to go uh, and to decentraland.org. Uh, so in here, I, oh, I started, so for you to understand this, this is a community on a blockchain and it needs your like um, a blockchain ID attached. So I opened it up right now in incognito tab, so it would not have any ID attached, but usually it will ask me to attach my blockchain wallet to it. So if you're not familiar with blockchain at all and you would just want to explore Decentraland, I suggest you to open up an incognito tab like I'm doing right now. We're also going to go through the procedure of uh, how to do it if you uh, familiar with the blockchain, you have the wallet, or at least you would like to get enrolled. But for now, just we're going to do it without any um, blockchain identification or wallet. So all you need to do, uh, go to get started. And uh, so it will take some time because right now I'm running a lot of things on my computer. Maybe I will close some of them to free up my computer and then my browser memory. Oops, and I closed uh, it, actually the, the whole window as well. So bear with me. I will do it again and try to be more careful this time. <clears throat> And we also have, uh, today we have on the meeting, we have Carl Freyvold, who is the community leader for Decentraland. And he is the manager of Decentraland Conference Center. So Carl, wh while I'm loading my window and loading Decentraland, why, just, do, why don't you give us just a little bit introduction about what Decentraland is and uh, about your, the conference center? Sure, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay. So um, the Decentraland Conference Center is a large uh, district of land in Decentraland that is being built up as a conference center with uh, theaters and meeting halls and expo centers and spaces for offices and stores. And we have two outdoor amphitheaters that are quite beautiful. Um, we have a lot of land and um, it's probably bigger than any uh, conference center in, on, on earth. Uh, and we are now starting to see quite a, a bit of uh, interest in, in events there. We've uh, hosted some of the hackathon uh, events, but we're also previously hosted a fashion show and uh, CoinFest held its, its annual conference at the conference center this year. This is all, even though Decentraland only opened up uh, February 20th, I think. So um, it's, going, it's going very well, the, the space is beautiful. Um, the, the virtual reality scene you see behind me is actually a forested area in the conference center. So um, uh, you are invited to use the Decentraland platform um, as, a, as an infrastructure for building projects that could work in a, in a virtual reality. And uh, my team in the teams list is there to help people with the technology or, or other aspects of understanding how to do a project in Decentraland. So yeah, so basically that's what Decentraland looks like from the um, inside. So just to give you guys heads up. So when you uh, load uh, using the system, what you need to do first is click on the center of your screen to lock your mouse. And then after that, you can actually move your mouse around and browse around. Right now there's a little bit of delay because I'm running right now lots of power on my computer, you know, hosting all you and Zoom and everything. But usually, of course, it's, it's uh, not as laggy. You can also use your arrows uh, forward, back, and side to side to move here. So basically, you just walk in uh, into the uh, virtual world. 
Uh, we holding some of the talks here, and today, the, actually, the following talks following this meeting uh, at 12 p.m. Uh, 12 p.m. Uh, uh, Elena, if you yes. if we make it to the meeting center during your demo, you'll see that yes. this uh, is yes, being streamed into the uh, meeting center. Awesome. So I, I will show you how to get into the meeting center where we'll be holding the next talk right following this presentation. It's, we're going to go to dclconf.com. All right, so this is very easy, dclconf.com, and we will post this. Uh, and, and this is actually in the useful links as well. You can see, oh, I hope it is, that I'm not lying. So I, I, this is the conference center that Carl is managing. And if, if you scroll uh, down and you see the picture of the, the room, you see the feature of virtual reality on the blockchain, you click on this picture and it takes you directly uh, into the meeting center. It actually takes you right in, in in front of the meeting center, and you can actually walk and ha uh, see our next talk as an avatar, right? So you are actually will be an avatar inside the virtual reality, and you so can Alina, the be... first picture, right? It says the uh, conference center. Yes, no, not not the first. Not uh, yeah, you can do the first, but it's also you have to scroll down and see the North the meeting room, North meeting room. So Carl, what, what is it again? It's not on my screen right yeah, now. Yeah, meeting, okay. ce meeting center uh, picture. North stage, picture. right? Yeah, North stage, exactly. So right now, yes, it's again, uh, it's a little bit uh, taking a little bit uh, of time to draw all the elements because I'm running Zoom right now and hosting all of you. But once we have the picture, you click on the center, there you go. Carl is actually here, you see? Carl is walking right by me, right beside so, me. So, Elena, is it always going to be the north stage or? So, uh... Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can actually see the presentations from any of the rooms. Uh, you can see our live streaming up here on a panel right here in the Expo yeah, so Center the room. Yeah, the future of virtual. But if we uh, walk up the hall to the... Um, Could you hear this double room. voice from my screen at all or no? Because I, I just had the double voice because no. I, I needed no, to mute. All right. Fine. Okay, that's great. All right. So here you see that there's all the information. Even you can see right away. You're not gonna get lost when you arrive here. You can see our planet wide SOS hackathon signs. You, you may know that to, we are in the right place. Uh, Elena, you may want to mute that tab on your browser. Yeah, I just right. did. You did. I just okay. did. I just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. helped me because yeah, I remember our conversation this morning. Yes. Yeah. All right. So that's that's how um, you get inside the the center. And this is I show you the way to the meeting room that we have our next talk in 30 minutes. And so we will have uh, the personal and the company branding. You see, and actually our meeting, you see, it's actually streamed here. So Carl found a way to stream our entire meeting into the screen. In the, in the... Yeah, it's about a 40 second delay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's audible but and visible here in the space. Yeah. So in the, if I actually turn this way, maybe I will see myself. All right. So uh, in order to see your avatar, uh, you can use the V button. And so in here, this is how I look in this reality. There you go. This is my avatar. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can dance. For example, I use the button number three, and my avatar can dance, for example. There you go. So we can be uh, in the same room and not worry about any virus situation. There you go. So this is what Decentraland gives us. And uh, also you can perform and do speeches here. Decentraland is a huge community. There are, uh, I'm not sure, Carl, we talked about last time. So how many people is involved right now in Decentraland? Do you have any stats about that? Um, out of their mailing list is about 20,000. I think they have about 9,000 landowners. Mm -hmm. um, Many of their Discord channels are, are just have thousands of people in them, so it's it's a big community. Um, the online numbers are small right now, but growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at their events calendar, uh, which you can get to through decentraland.org, um, you can see there's more and more stuff going on. There's enough stuff going on. There's often things going on at the same time. That's a good sign. There you go. Yeah, so 20,000 people and they you actually can build your business inside the central land. So that's uh, um, and if you would like to learn more, Carl is here in the discord and he's organizing a team who actually interested. Yes, in if, you, if, you, 
want to create some sort of a prototype of an experience or a, a test or something. Um, but it would, in the real world, it would require a fair amount of capital to build a building or, or uh, you know, some sort of a demonstration of a, of a system. Uh, doing it in virtual reality might be a quick way to get some usability feedback and kind of really get a sense of it in a 3D space. Mm -hmm. So right now, I will stop share my screen for a second. Any questions about that? What about building, say, a museum? Um, are people expected to pay for not nonprofit um, prototypes the same way as in the real world? Or can we build something for a nonprofit um, application like a museum or art gallery mm -hmm. if um, you know, if it's not about making money, is there a different price structure for building something on Decentraland? You know, I would say there is no established market value for the land uh, use at this time. There's a pretty well-established value for the land itself if you want to buy some. But there are many landowners um, and other districts who are very open right now to having traffic and activity and can work out some sort of arrangement that's very economically um, feasible. I have a uh, museum as one of the tenants in the conference center. It's a, it's a social history museum, um, kind of a justice uh, oriented and, and innovation oriented um, of the last century or so. It's a pretty good museum. Um, and I'm not charging them anything. Um, I, we are sharing the results of a tip jar that's in there. Somebody wants to tip when they're in the museum. But um, I think we're at a stage right now where nonprofits could actually get traction somewhere. Uh, and if nowhere else, ask me at the conference center. But the conference center is like, you know, 5% of the land or something. There's, there's a vast amount of land um, and many different types of use, land use in Decentraland. Uh, well, yes, thinking, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Thinking of um, this group is for neighborhoods around the world getting together, my understanding, the community call. So we could do um, some kind of online ideal community or um, so it wouldn't be something that would fit into somebody else's application like um, a conference center. It would actually be simulating a district um, if we had an ideal international district in one place on Decentraland, uh, would we speak to somebody um, at head office or? Uh, yeah, so we, we started this conversation, Andrew. So just okay. that, yeah, maybe we can talk a little bit offline about this. Yes, so this is, yeah. uh, so there is a DAO, also decentralized community behind the Decentraland right now, which makes all the decisions. So we basically have to, you know, put a case for them and communicate this way. Um, all right, so uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about a wallet, uh, and this is because this is a community built on a blockchain. Uh, there is um, your internal blockchain identity, uh, like per se, that you can connect. Uh, then you can also do your online, you know, purchases. You can purchase your permanent nickname, your avatar, um, make changes like purchase like clothing and, and so on and so forth. And that's how we all, you also can build your businesses, selling people, you know, this the piece of the clothing, digital clothing that you develop, for example. Right. So and it's all all the connections is done through the wallet. Right now, MetaMask is the one that Decentraland uses. Right. So there's no other um, I mean, no other uh, wallets that are attached. So right now behind the scenes, I'm not sure if you see it on my screen, the MetaMask, probably not, but it's asking me to sign uh, with my ID and transactions and start loading. And at this point, uh, my avatar is actually attached to the wallet in a blockchain. 
uh, to purchase a permanent nickname and avatar, you will require about 100 mana, which is the digital money inside Decentraland. And it's about three and a half US dollars. But for our conference attendees, for uh, sorry, for the, not only for the attendees, but it also for all the hackers, for all participants of our community, Decentraland committed to reimburse this mana, the one that you spent on your permanent avatar. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, yes, uh, so Elon, uh, Elon, and then at this point, I would like to actually pass the microphone to Elon, who will be talking about our submissions and the voting and about a DAO um, that we have. The DAO is a digital cooperative, digital organization that we're building through which we make it in, uh, available all the voting and all the decisions that you're going to make in this hackathon. So Elon, please go ahead, yours. Hi guys, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yes? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so um, I'll, I'm, I, I'll show you um, the DAO stack framework and the DAO stack DAO uh, and to tell you that the, the goal of this organization is that um, we accumulate people and we uh, invite them to join the cooperative and um, the more you participate, uh, the more voting power you have. we will have. Uh, in the organization, also moving forward after this first hackathon. So let me quickly share my screen. I'll, I'll, I'll be taking over from you, I think, Elena. Yes, yes, please. Let me just, I stop sharing. There you go. Can you, can you share? Yeah. I'll awesome. Share. So I'm, I'm sharing my entire screen. Um, this is, this is kind of how the UI looks like. Um, this is not our DAO. This is a, a, a DAO on a staging environment. Um, but I wanted to show you two things. The first one is how to make a submission and uh, participate in, in the hackathon, basically. Um, so we will have these sort of competitions, um, which here I, I, uh, I, I, I put some parameters that are uh, arbitrary. Um, but we have like when the competition starts, when it ends, when does the voting st start, and when does the competition end? And let me just quickly show you, um, yeah, how to make a new submission. It's fairly simple. Um, so here I would put uh, like, you know, this is submission number two. Uh, this is the best submission, and it should win. So here in the description area, you will put uh, details about. Uh, your hackathon projects, what you've done, um, and where you want to take it, we'll have a sort of like a template that you guys could fill. Um, you can you can add tags uh, if this is in a certain um, uh, let's say in a certain field like blockchain, AI, um, and VR, <laughs> all the things. <laughs> um, here in the URL, you can add um, you can add the URL to either your GitHub. GitHub repo or uh, anywhere, it, it, it could even be a Google Doc where you're uh, describe, describing even uh, further um, on your submission. And you can also add here, um, you can also add here a video. I'll just, oh, I'll just add this video. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I think uh, Elena, we are doing like video submissions as well, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we would like uh, yeah. because we would like our people to watch your videos on how you present, not only watch your presentations, because kind of this, this will be like faceless. We would like you to put your face into your project. Yes. Okay. Um, and yeah, so you will have to sign a transaction similar to what Elena just showed you. This is with MetaMask. Um, you guys can see it, right? The MetaMask thing. Yeah. Do we see it? Do um, we see it? Uh, I can. No, no, no. I, I don't think I can see the MetaMask. Hmm. Okay, can Can you open okay. it up again? Maybe I just missed it. Let's see. Yeah. Is it the test submission, the best submission? Yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah. So my MetaMask opens up. Can you guys see this? Sure. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay. Um, and we are using actually a second layer on Ethereum. I am not sure how how familiar people here are with Ethereum, but 
Um, this second there basically allows us to use uh, much cheaper transactions, um, and we will basically fund the transactions for everyone. Um, so yeah, this is, as you can see, oh, I made the, I wrote submission number two twice. This is kind of how it looks like, and I will show you now how to vote for it, for the different submissions in, oh, I actually messed it up a bit. <laughs> But uh, yes, so in order to vote, like I, I messed up the times, but in order to vote, basically, um, once the voting begins, you'll be able to simply click here. Like, so here I have, um, let's see which one is submission with the video. I have the video here. Um, I have the tags here and I'll be able to, once the, once the voting time starts, which is in 48 minutes, uh, I miscalculated, uh, you'll be able to vote. Um, and right now, I am the only member of this DAO. Um, this is my uh, my nickname here. Uh, and I have like 100% of the reputation. But as people will join, um, um, basically their reputation or the voting power will be distributed among all these people. Um, and the way you vote is you apply your entire reputation onto the vote. So let's say you have 1,000 reputation you vote with that 1,000 reputation. If you have 50, you will vote with your 50. Um, you can't split it up or anything like that. Um, and we will we will decide, but you'll be able to vote more than once for um, uh, for the hackathon. So you can pick like your top three or top four, something like that. Um, you have here like a discussion section where you can discuss about um, the hackathon and different submissions. And yeah, I think I want to make this like very short and, and easy to understand. Uh, I don't know. Anyone has any questions? Uh, right now, guys, just something to, th to think about. Like, this is not the focus of us right now here. Uh, your focus right now is to build your teams, to start working on your projects, right? So this is some technicality that we'll figure out for you. We'll make the process uh, the, the most convenient for you, the, like the vote, the clear and everything. So, but this is in the essence how we're going to be doing it through blockchain. And you will have your own voting power in there as well. So that says this is all you need to concern. Yeah. yeah. Please ask you all your questions. I know questions. It means that it's very, very clear. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's clear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So at yeah. this point, I actually, guys, would like to, again, to open to any general questions. Or if you would like to present your idea, it would be a good time to do it right now. Uh, after like in 15 minutes, we are going to be listening to our um, one of the, our presenters track about personal and business branding. Very, very. So he's a really good uh, storyteller. And uh, this is something that to pay attention when you are branding your own project. Right. So when you're presenting it to the judges. So this is something that probably going to be useful for you and also for your own well, personal you like brand to as well. Present your idea. Uh, good time to do it right now. Uh, all right, so right now I have my second voice. Like, where did it come from? Uh, Carl, is it from you? <laughs> nope, I think okay. it, somebody's right, listening so. to the live stream, maybe. All right, yes, 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 yeah. guys, yeah, that, that's good. Okay, um, yeah, so if you would like to present right now your idea, please do so. Uh, I also will post uh, here we have the um, I will post in the chat uh, the direct link if you would like to attend our next talk right from in Decentraland, you can do so. Uh, and of course, this link is in the useful links in our Discord. By the way, I will also post it in, into this chat. Just give me a second while you're getting ready maybe to present. So I just posted in the chat, this is bit.ly link, SOS hack Decentraland. So when you click to this link, it takes you directly to the conference center. 
which you see. And once you, your avatar and everything is loaded, just click on the center of your screen and use the arrow buttons to move. You can also use WASD buttons uh, because yeah, some of us, you know, left-handed, some of us right-handed. Uh, so for right-handed people using uh, W instead of uh, arrow forward would be uh, more convenient. All right, uh, any takers right now on the presentations? Okay, so no takers on any any questions that you have so far on the hackathon. Is anything unclear about submissions? Discord, please ask. Uh, Alina, I have a question. Um, yes, I am. When you go to Decentraland, because I'm in the uh, North Stage, yes. where do we exactly go for the workshop? Is it anywhere where there is a screen? Like I can see the projected. And anyway, so you, we will be presenting it in the north room. So you go uh, basically uh, from you move forward until you hit the very last room in the building. And actually, you can go through walls. If you don't hit the sign, you can go through walls as well in there. So do I go where? Like I can see the projected screen in the mm -hmm. central line. Would you mind fine? maybe sharing your screen, and then okay. we will guide you? Yes. Uh, and guys, if you didn't post your uh, Discord ID in the chat, please do as uh, that as well. Just to remind you. All right, Aya. Uh, I mean, I need to fix something with security. So we ah, can go on. All right. Yeah. Got I think it, you got can it. go on. Wait, hold on one second. I think I figured it out. So in uh, UIA, you have security tight, not only during the conferences, but also <laughs> on your computers too. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's um, great. <laughs> so, so from what I've seen, uh, from my experience, UAE is, is the most secure country right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from all our 45 countries that we have involved, yes, so, so this is the security settings are the most uh, advanced there. I, th I think I can share it now because I have to uh, fix the uh, security preference uh, before awesome. starting. Okay, so let call. me maybe then share my screen. Mm -hmm. uh, where am I in Decentraland right now? All right, so I am in front of this meeting center. All right, so let me share my screen. So this is where you are going to spawn. Can you see, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And uh, oh, you move forward. And by the way, you can go through the walls. So this right now is a nice, very nice feature. So I see somebody spawned here, right? So some guest it might be you, Aya. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you, you, you follow through this room. Oh, so this is, this is not the one. Mm -hmm. You you go further, you move and move and move. Like, can I move here through the build? Ah, no, it's still ah. Ran into the sign. Okay, I ran into a sign. So where am I? Yeah, so here. And so this is the, the kind of like the very very north. I think is it north yeah. side side of the building? Yes. Yeah. So here. So once you see the stage and the screen, and this is the Crypto Chicks Planet Wide Hackathon stream talks. This is you know that you are in the right room. All right, mm -hmm. and here yes. you see and Carl. Be switching to Trex talk here in a couple of minutes. There you go. So you see Carl Fravel, so it's, who's our Carl? Yeah. So notice that your notice that your URL at the top in the browser has a realm. Make sure you're in realm Artemis Blue. Artemis uh, from, Blue. from the link that I gave in Discord, yes. and yeah, it's it's actually we we taken it to. Um, so guys, here you see that the, my uh, URL is Artemis Blue, right? Realm Artemis Blue. So this is. Uh, some of the restrictions that there is in the Decentraland to um, have just a certain number of people, not to make system laggy. Yep. The little right. mini, mini map in the upper left corner has a little red dot with a pointer that shows which direction you're going. Mm -hmm. So when you first show up in the conference center, um, you know, area for the meeting center, you're outside and you walk north through the building, basically, to the north end. Mm -hmm. And that's why I called the North Room. Any questions on that? Aya, is it is it clear now? Can you go yeah, and try right to try try to go to this room so I could see you? 
I can see Carl's name, but I can't see Carl himself. Okay, so because you're probably behind this wall. You are right oh, now okay. behind the wall. Just move a little bit further, maybe through the door. You know, that's how we human used to, you know, move through the doors, not through the walls. I, I will try to find you here. Here you are, right? I can see you. Um, maybe. Yeah. Walk yeah. forward and you should right a little bit. Okay. There you go. Okay. Go. Cool. I'm in. Are you in? Because I cannot see. Yeah. You. No, I'm in. I'm there. I'm there. Are you, we're are you the, using Chrome or Firefox? Chrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. right now, Firefox Firefox beside the logo, uh, beside the banner itself. Are you? Why I it's cannot a... see you? I'm not sure why I cannot see you. Carl, is it kind it of happens, like some happens post sometimes? Sometimes happens yeah. because when well, when you don't have the permanent permanent avatar and everything, so this is probably can happen. But yeah, if you can you have be in a room, an invisible see, cloak. <laughs> yeah, we'll over you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. yeah. So, guys, so. yes. If you would like to try it right now and do it in your, from your computers, please just follow the link that I just sent you in your chat. So you can, you know, spawn into the, into this room. You can use, uh, like, in order to not to, you know, attach to any wallets for now. Use the incognito mode on your tab. For this, you have to right click on your Chrome and select new incognito window. All right, so in here, and then from there, you paste a URL that I just posted in the chat. Uh, so that's, it's going to be b.link, oh, sorry, b.ly uh, SOS uh, hack Decentraland. Right, so and then make sure that this, the upper and lower case is uh, also, um, is also the correct right so in order to to do yeah and you know what i'd like to add to everybody from um who's listening right now we are implementing lots of technology platforms but this if you're finding this daunting or difficult you and this is too much tech for you remember that you can do this hackathon based on just an idea if, if you have an idea that you think will help your local community or is scalable uh, to connect your community to the rest of the world and you're not a techie, you're welcome to join. We have different tracks for the technical and non-technical. So you're welcome to join just to take an opportunity with mentors and the people around you to develop that idea that can become something. Remember every Thing that happens globally starts with an idea and we really promote that as well so again if the, this technology all these pieces sound like too much don't worry just come and register and try to launch an idea that you think is useful and we will help you with it all right, uh, and, and also while we are waiting and then we not into uh, next talk yet, uh, I just would like you to uh, take through the SOS Hackathon website and see, uh, just guide you what we have here. So first of all, you can join our Discord community just from this picture, right? Join our Discord community. You can register. You can ask your you know, friends, family, and whoever supports you to donate so they could you know, vote for you later on. Uh, partners, uh, we also have a section for partners if you have an organization like to partner with us so there is this link available for you as well this is all the information from our hackathon uh, so the tracks and the words the tracks that we are catering for its ideas and solution to connect people remotely and also ideas to help your local businesses communities local people as well so because we support your local economy uh, in addition to one of the tracks that you apply for like the submit your application in you can also apply for one of the awards or maybe to two, two, two even awards uh, top business idea and top women led team award All right so we will also have uh, just uh, maybe revealing some of the information we have another like sponsor organization coming in so they will have their own award as well listed here so you can apply for their award too it's just to have you additional money, additional funding available for you. Uh, we also have our keynote speakers listed 
there, right? And uh, if you click on any of the picture, it takes you right into their page and the website. For example, we will have track just in a few minutes here. If you click on his picture there, it takes you to his speech page and uh, you're not only going to see what his presentation is about. Also, after his presentation, we post uh, his recording recording of his talk, we post the, his slides, so everything that you need to actually to join this presentation. So for all as well, so you you see the additional information on how you join this talk, you can join, for example, in Zoom that we are in right now, and we can join in the uh, virtual reality on this central end. So these are the uh, information that available to you through the website soshackathon.com. And I think we ready to move right to the presentation of track uh, and probably I will right now right away tell you uh, uh, who our track is so track is a face behind the shades so yes yeah, so we never saw his real face he's always behind the shades he uses the art of storytelling to provide beginner to advance education real world application and business solution based on a blockchain technology you can read it yourself so track is um we, i've known track already for a year so he's our very great mentor into our crypto chicks hatchery which is the pre-incubation program for our people that finished our hackathons to take their businesses further. Uh, so he's been very, very instrumental of teaching our audience on how to actually speak and be very concise, which is a skill that needs to be learned. So before him, uh, all our um, presentation and speakers, they would take on and on and on and on forever. But he was able actually to teach them so they could present. They take only two minutes and presented this two minutes. So very much looking for his presentation today. Thank you so much, Trek. And I'm going to share the screen in Decentraland. So, uh, Carl, how do we organize this presentation? Will Trek will be inside of the Decentraland, or we just stream it here? I think right. Trek is having a little trouble uh, being yeah. visible in the world, and I'm not sure quite what's going on. Okay. Um, so I tried switching over to the Chrome side. I don't usually. Um, I really cut back on my Chrome usage and I mainly use um, Brave for everything. Yeah. Uh, and I'm having an issue with the Meta um, Mask wallet on the Chrome side now. So, do you have Meta yeah, Mask working on, on Brave? Um, no, I still haven't been able to actually see the other um, people in the, in the room. No, no, I mean, you do have a Meta Mask plugin in Brave? Yes. And you uh, for sure are in Artemis Blue? Yes. But you're, you're in this room, but you just don't see anybody? No. All right. So then, uh, oh, at least I see Aya right now. So she actually spawned here. This is really good. All right. So maybe we have some uh, some of the maybe delay or something, but I'm not sure where, like, how, how do we want to proceed? Because we can... Uh, we, can we can stream the, the talk. We can stream the talk. Okay. Yeah, and let so, Trek uh, share his screen. So, and go yes. Through uh, so Trek, okay, at this point, great. I will this stop sharing my this, screen. This. Yes, I will stop sharing my screen and I will let you be a co-host. Let me just do you a co-host. This way, if my connection, you know, drops off, you still I, be able I, to I do. announced the meeting uh, in some Decentraland channels. So we may have some guests here that show up. The uh, if, if you do, or if you are looking in World and what looking at Zoom, you're going to want to mute the tab on your browser in, in World. Otherwise, you're going to hear the audio twice. Yeah, yeah. Like to to audios yes yeah, yeah. So, so if you if you hear two audios just go to your tab of the browser right right click on your tab and there is a mute but uh, i feel like that is one of the there. greatest new features in web browsers right now yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very please useful. be quiet right <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. So, track it's all yours. Uh, thank you for joining, and we are here to listen. All right. I'm gonna have to. I'm like working between the three monitors right now, so I gotta switch one or two things around because how I was originally looking to um, do this. Okay, so um, no, it's not on that window. So I'm gonna 
Yeah, I guess I'm gonna end up taking it off of here. And slice Okay. Uh, it actually moved from the one window that I didn't want it to be in. Yeah. Okay. So I think that should be actually. I'm gonna have to move this. Sorry. At the play around with a couple of different screens. Okay. All right. While you may be getting ready, I will um, talk a little bit about more uh, your presentation. So this presentation is focuses on the, on the necessity of personal and business brand development because the digital landscape in the coming decade will be flooded with a new wave of people, ideas, projects. So there's lots and lots of competition around and it's going to be even more. So in order to stand out, uh, you need to learn on how to do that. Um, there you go. And of course, all these pitches have to be based on, you know, on humanity, on empathy, on trust and transparency. The people can trust you have to be very sincere with them. All right. There we go. Thank you. Um, all right. Sorry, it's not all 100%. Why are we doing this to me? All right, you can at least see that screen that shows the um, big screen of the eight ball and then the um, side screen, correct? I, I, cannot, I don't think you're sharing yet. I cannot, I cannot see, like maybe click oh, share button there again. Too. There yeah. you go. Yes, now, now you're sharing. Yep. Now All right, see. you can see that. All right, now I gotta take that window away then. Okay, so um, my name is Trek with two Ks. Hello, hello, hola, hola, as I say. Uh, Magic 8-Ball, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but in the States we have this thing we call the Magic 8-Ball and we use it for like a tongue-in-cheek kind of joke of how can you predict the future and you ask the Magic 8-Ball a question, am I going to be a millionaire? Am I going to make a million dollars? Am I going to be the, the number one, um, let's say, crypto influencer? Am I going to live forever and ever like be 101 years old and you shake the ball and then like you get these messages inside of it? I happen to see this and I said, this one's gonna fit for what I'm trying to um, get at right now. No, I am not a, uh, I cannot tell the future is the bottom line folks. So that's total BS on that part. Anyone who tells you they can tell you with 100% certainty the future is more than likely trying to get your money. At least that's my interpretation of it. So going forward, um, let me just break down a couple of things about how this is going. I'm not trying to tell you the future in regards to I know exactly what is going to happen. I just look at how history plays out and that there's a certain level of um, or um, number of events that happen that then make a pattern. And we see things working in certain cycles. Um, and so that's kind of how I'm really approaching this whole thing. So I'll start jumping into the first, um, well, this is the intro slide. So first slide is this. Uh, there we go. Can you go All right. Full screen so, on the, can you go full screen on the current slide by chance? Uh, see, it's not way? letting me. Last few. You have a screen there. Maybe that's. Because what? You know what? Hold on. Let me do this. I'm gonna switch again. Where are you? That's not the window. Where is this window? Uh, what is going on? No, one, two. Escape, okay, there we go. Uh, where and it's not uh 
Technology, why are you messing with me today? I have this window and the control window, but the control window isn't showing up the way I need it to. So I can. No. Why? Oh, okay. That's why. There we go. All right, I'm going to try this again. I'm just going to move things around. Um, screen two, screen one. And okay, you can see it here. No, not yet. Not you're, you're not, not sharing, sharing the screen. Yet. Share, share. All right. Yes. Better. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Now, oh yeah, this is that totally good. I gotta find you. Okay. There we go. All right. So as I was saying. Um, I don't trust you is the name of this presentation. And the reason why I have come to that particular conclusion is that from what I see that happened to us in the first decade and then how, and when I say the first decade, I'm gonna use a couple of different terms um, and I'm gonna switch back between the different realms. So there's the crypto verse for those of us who've been in the space, if we've been here for a year, if we've been here for two years, if you've even been here as far as going back to the 09 um, period. And then there is the main verse. The main verse is uh, the regular everyday part of life, people who are not necessarily connected or uh, interested in any level within the crypto, um, crypto blockchain space. So when I say main verse, I'm talking about like what you would see on your regular news stuff, what you hear on Wall Street and things like that, what you hear um, in the regular news segments. And then when I say crypto verse, I'm talking specifically about things that have been going on in the blockchain crypto space. So that's kind of how I'm going to make those references going back and forth. Mm, excuse me. So that is the uh, overview of this presentation in a nutshell. And the idea behind it again is that um, trust and how things are going to go forward as far as if you're looking to be a startup business or you're a small business or you're already operating in this space, the, the environmental landscape is going to change. And um, we have an a various number of past events and like current events, like right now within this first, what the first two quarters of the year that are really generating this. And the reason why I'm looking to go at memes as how the rest of this presentation will play out, as you will see, is that, oh, there we go, memes. So memes are basically a combination of words and images put together that convey a um, sentiment that's relevant to the society. The, de the general distribution is through um, social media. So whether you talk about Twitter, whether you're talking about even, I start, I've started actually seeing stuff popped up on LinkedIn in regards to memes. Um, but generally it was either Facebook, Twitter, or um, IG that were really the main realms of where you saw a meme pop up. The interesting thing about memes is memes are almost like a real time um, satire on seeing what's going on within your your with your bigger society or culture. I'm going to use a pretty much most of the um, references I use in these memes will be through a more Western American context, only because that's kind of where I'm operating out of right now. But when you look at the the landscape of the blockchain crypto space, as far as the crypto verse is concerned, X amount of attention is paid to what goes on in the West, i.e. Um, mainly America. There are other examples that play out in other regions of the world. And we'll get into that in a couple. Um, another thing to point out, and this also makes to show as a very big indicator as far as memes being a, um, a way to get and like tap in on the pulse of what's going on with people and how they're perceiving what's going on around them. 
Googly, mm -hmm. aka Google, just bought Giphy, right? So that was the website that um, was used to um, make gifts. And like, they definitely, uh, I would say what they paid for what they're going to be able to get through the data analytics is no comparison. And I, I can only imagine what their number crunchers did to say, well, if we drop, you know, I think it was like in the billions, um, what we will get through the data analytics, um, probably within the first two years, especially for what's going on right now, it's going to be no comparison. It, it will definitely not be a loss for them is the point. So going into, where am I at? Uh, yeah, trying to operate multiple screens is definitely a little bit more challenging when trying to also have a screen that you share. So the first thing I'm gonna get into is this thing called a social contract. The social contract is a um, concept that was brought up in the 16th to the 18th century. It was really made popular by a couple of gentlemen, basically some real and not antiquity time um, kind of folks, but it, it comes back, uh, it comes from a pretty long time ago, but most modern um, governments and modern societies. So whether you're talking about third tier to first tier country operate within this thing of the, um, the public and the government relation the relationship. And so you have the people and then you have um, for what jurisdiction they live in, what, what country they live in and the understanding that they'll have between what they would quote give up to the government in order to get certain things of certain um, amenities and protections and like a stable, relatively stable way of life. So the gentlemen who like really thought of this stuff back in the day were um, John Locke and um, how do you say this guy's name? Jean um, Russo, Jack Russo, Jack, nah. sorry, I'm messing up on the French names for the uh, French folks, I apologize, but it's that time era. So Thomas Hobbes and them, they come up with this whole concept. Um, but what we see happening now, right, for the time that they came up with this, there was no such thing as the internet. People were still doing snail mail. It took months to get from one place to the other. If you wrote a book, it took months for a book to get published. And then it also took even longer for that book to get into another place, even when the printing press comes into play. So imagine how long it took an idea to go from one location to another. We have the internet now. The internet changes the whole game on this thing. People are now able to see in relatively real time instant, hey, that situation is going on over there. That's not what's happening over here, but I still find it funny what's going on over there, or I find it sad, or I'm mad about it, whichever emotion it generates for them, right? When it comes to um, how cultural dynamics start um, diffusing through the internet, this is what memes show us. Memes show us that cultural dynamics are fusing through the internet in a more satire, satire, satire manner, meaning it's, it's relatively, um, we, have, we make joke of it, we make light of it, but as they say, even though when you make joke of stuff, there is a sense of truth in that humor, right? So going into this next one, um, oh, also one of the other things I wanna point out about this whole social contract thing and why I took this particular one was because it really does apply in regards to Toy Story of Buzz and Woody in that you don't actually sign up for it. It's just one of those things that you were born into. That's it. And it's just always there. Uh, and I, I just, when I saw it, it just instantly clicked to me because it's one of the things that I've been really um, focusing on the last couple of years and seeing how, the cultural dynamics has been changing over the years. So now, first thing I'm gonna jump off with as an event that shows us that um, trust is, is being eroded and trust is being eroded in regards to the financial side of the world. Um, what is it called? The um, finance controls, finance, um, what is it? Uh, finance, not policies. Um, 
I can't think of the word right now. And I just had it earlier when I wanted to make this point. But this gentleman right here is Bernie Madoff. If you do not know who Bernie Madoff is, he is a gentleman who basically was running one of the largest Wall Street Ponzi schemes in modern day history. And the irony of it is you have a fair number of people who after the fact of when everything started quote becoming public started saying, oh yeah, you know, well, such and such bank, he had a special account there and no one was saying anything to him. And the end at the end of the day, this particular individual really only got in trouble and went to jail and is still currently in jail because he ended up taking money from the wrong people. It wasn't the everyday average person. What does this mean? And what I'm trying to get at for those of us, those of you who are in the um, entrepreneurship thing, being a small business, being, you know, relative mid-sized business, whatever the product or service is. Um, when you start doing things that ruffle the feathers of certain groups of folks, that's when you might have the negative repercussions come back. Case in point for him, it wasn't that he was taking money from the people who didn't really have the, the, the money to invest in the things that he was saying that they can make money off of. It was that he took it from the people who did have that discretionary fund to do it. And then it didn't work out the way they wanted. And so guess what? The repercussions were they went to the authorities and he ends up in jail. In the public perception side of this, we see it and go, wait, where's the transparency? Where's the, um, the empathy in regards to him taking money from people who didn't have the money to um, be able to quote waste like that or gamble like that? What happened to that part of looking out for the little guy? The government didn't take action because they were looking out for the little guy. They were looking out for the people who were already well off. And that's where that discontention is. That's where that disconnect is. And this is one of like the major things that we see for that 08, 09 period come out, as well as the housing bubble um, itself happens. And so in the public perception, what we're seeing here is, hey, you didn't get in trouble because you screwed over the majority of the regular folks. You got in trouble because you screwed over the well-to-do folks there's that disconnect of if I'm just a regular average Joe, the authorities aren't looking out for me. Again, this is, this is just a continuous trend. I'm not saying that he's the first example of where the mistrust, where the, the loss of empathy or, or where the, the, um, the disguising of transparency comes in. I'm just using his, as, him as the example of it in the public perception. Now we get to this, not, well, this, gentleman right here will say um ben uh, uh bernanke ben bernanke sorry i'm messing up on names right now so ben bernanke um he's the head of his department for what he's at right uh, at the time and he's going before congress and he is talking to the uh the con the, the congress in the u.s and he's telling them hey we need to, you know, do things to help the big um, companies, especially the big banks. And so you have things like where AIG is getting billions of dollars behind closed doors. You have this new concept called too big to fail that happens. And the irony of this particular thing is when it was put out in regards to like Congress hearing about it, the news hearing about it, um, people, the everyday person reading it in their local newspaper, too big to fail as a concept was not even originally designed for what they ended up using it for. Like if you read into the history of it, it was actually something totally different that came out of the DOJ, okay? Um, I don't want to get lost into that whole thing, but the point being is that once again, we see another example of, hey, what's going on here? The, the government's arguing that we should protect the big businesses. The government's arguing that we should, um, and it's not even an argument. This is more of a statement. And then all of a sudden, the news starts pushing it out. Hey, these companies are too big to fail. We can't let the banks go under. We have to do X, Y, and Z. And so you have this particular situation play out. Again, the public perception is, hey, what's going on? Why isn't it that the government isn't doing what it's supposed to do to look out for me and that I thought we had a relationship in this social contract, right? 
So the social contract, again, is being eroded in various ways because of what we see going on within the business realm and what we see going on within our political realm. And granted, I'm using um, American examples, but excuse me, um, this is not to say that it's not happening in other countries. For example, America wasn't the only com com uh, company to um, do bail-ins and um, quantitative easing for the big business sectors. Um, Japan did stuff, South Korea did stuff, th different things were utilized in Europe as well. And so we do focus on America mm -hmm. because, hey, that was the, the, the bigger um, spotlight mm -hmm. being posted. But just to understand and put it in a better context, America was not the only government that was doing things like this. But the perception for the regular um, everyday person was, hey, the government isn't looking out for me the way it's supposed to, because at the end result, what we saw happen was the government gave the companies money, but the companies didn't follow through on the quote trickle down effect of how they argued this would be what would help Main Street. So uh, lesson learned to a degree for us, you would hope, but that's not exactly what happened. So now jumping back into the um, cryptoverse, you have this situation happening, right? Where you have so many people who are in the space right now, the early, we'll say OGs, the, the pioneer folks, the believers, the enthusiasts, and they'll tell you stuff like, yeah, man, I'm in it for the tech. And honestly, I use this line myself. I say that to people all the time. The only difference is I do not have all the bling bling that this man has on him. I am nowhere near that within the bank account. But I do believe in the tech part of it. In the earlier part of the day, um, in the first decade, what you had playing out was people were seeing um, who, who weren't in the space at the time. So let's say you got in in like 2013, you figured out how to do the trading thing, you, th you figured out arbitrage, all of that fun stuff, you were probably doing mining or whatever, right? People now see that you are, quote, making money and now you're showcasing it because you're getting all of these material things, right? And the material things that you're getting, hey, guess what? People are watching because you're showing it off. And so that in turn attracts more people in, but you still have people saying, oh, well, yeah, I'm here for the tech. I'm here for the tech. Why are you buying a $100,000 car? What, what does that have to do with tech? It's a, it's a disconnection again in um, the the what you're saying to sound um, humble and 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 uh, what's the other word um, humble and not um, materialistic, but then I'm watching what you're doing and oh wow, like you're wasting money on stuff that you would have never wasted it on before, but you now are like Bitcoin rich. So within the cryptoverse, we have this thing going on of where we see the people who are just being what I call the bag chasers, which mean the people who are really just going about it after the money. They don't necessarily care about, you know, the original ethos of how it's about being independent from the government as far as your um, economic freedom or having transparency or being decentralized. They just see the opportunity to make financial gain. Okay. This meme um, in particular puts that out there in a pretty good balance of word and image. And so going to the next one, this um, young man right here, if you don't know who he is, um, he was the bag holder. And as the bag holder, the bag holder in this context mean he was the one who last was dealing with um, Magic, the, what is it? The Gathering Online Exchange. If you don't know what that is, it is commonly referred to as Mount Gox, right? Mount Gox, when it first came out, was like 2006. Crypto doesn't come into play until around like 2013-ish. Um, well, 2012, 20, 2013-ish. The point being is that um, this man right here, his name is Mark Car... Car uh, his French name, the French. I'm having a tough time with y'all today. I apologize. But um, Carpapellus, um, he bought it from... Um, Jeb, what is it, Ma, um, Makaleb, sorry, I messed up your name too. But here's what we saw on the outside in the cryptoverse. There was this great period we had where 
everything was working. People were between, what is it, like 2012 to 2014 until things started going awry. Um, Mount Gox was doing about 70% of the volume in the Bitcoin um, space, right? And everything was going out well, people are doing their transactions, the prices aren't too crazy. Granted, there are people making their uh, money for mining and things like that. And then all of a sudden we get to where things start getting sketchy because the transactions and your payouts start getting delayed. Transparency starts being a very big issue with Mt. Gox. Mark here is the one who ends up holding the bag at the end of it because he's not explaining publicly what's going on and he's still trying to deal with what's going on behind closed doors and trying to find out where things are going um, awry and what if again if you look into more of the detail of the story you find out that there are other things going on at governmental levels that started affecting their business and how um, it plays out into what is the public perception the public perception of this goes into the next thing Bam. Okay. It was a scam. X amount of people don't want to admit it, but depending on who you talk to, it's like, well, it worked for me when I was in there. So it wasn't a scam for me. Why? Because I was still getting my Bitcoin. I was still buying the things I needed to buy. I was able to exchange for the other stuff that I wanted and it worked. But the people who came in on the latter end, the people who didn't pay attention to what was going on within the platform and saw certain signs, guess what? They got left with the black eye because until to this day, and we're already at what, 2020, most of the folks have no compensation, especially if you weren't an, um, an uh, what is it, the initial investors. If you were just a regular user, like you are so at the bottom of the totem pole. Again, this goes to show government because it's a, um, it's a Japanese registered um, company. So it's dealing with that whole jurisdiction over there. Plus you have the American side of it because the SEC went after Mark um, for what was going on. Again, government, whichever side of the um, globe you're looking at it, doesn't seem to be looking out for the everyday average person. Where does this relate to you as a small business, as a, um, a, a startup? There will be things that will play out that are beyond you because of the governing body that you fall under in jurisdiction. If you start to do things that do not convey transparency to your end users, to your customers, to your clientele, if you're more of a niche market thing, you will have a harder time trying to get out or get ahead of what the blowback will be for it from it. Because um, in the day and age that we're at now, social media, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more later on, will be a friend or foe um, for you. Um, and I, like I said, I'll get into that a little bit later on. But this it was another example within the cryptoverse about transparency and how we got another black eye. So we lost a couple of people because they were like, you know, what? I just can't trust this um, crypto thing anymore. I can't trust Bitcoin. I don't even trust the blockchain, whatever. I'm done. I'm out. So we lost some people. We lost some traction, as they say. Uh, now, going into the next one, jumping back into the main verse. This is the BP oil spill, right? Again, transparency and trust in this scenario is, is lost because what we see happen is BP says, hey, we're doing everything we can. Hey, we did all of what we were supposed to, what we could in order to like make sure we had the best safe environment. But then we find out after the fact, well, no, there was some corners cut, this and that was happening. You look at the interaction going on between BP and the government, and then it kind of looks like it's a um, collusion thing going on. And so you have to question, well, why is it that we don't know exactly how much oil was lost? Or why is it that there's still some level of cleanup in certain places? Like we're, we're more than what, five years later at this point? Still a situation. Nonetheless, the public perception of what's going on is that there's no empathy for the locals who live in that area, there's no trust because it then later came out that the fee that they were showing people was in question of what the actual amount of, um, of oil that was actually being leaked into the ocean. And then the, um, the transparency, again, 
Um, there was definitely a closing off of what would be talked about through the news media, as well as what would be pushed out through VP. As a small business, these three things to me, and I'm not saying they are the make or break of your business, but if you do not have these things as part of how you're looking to um, build your, your brand or have your brand identity and tell what your story is, you can definitely um, be left out in the cold if there is a bigger business or if some government element comes in and um, kind of uh, silences you or pushes you out of what your market is, right? Um, as well as just, if there's a situation where, okay, you know, a mistake is made, do you just give some kind of corporate answer and then like sweep it under the rug? In this day and age, if you're a small business entrepreneur or just a solopreneur, um, you don't have the funds or more than likely the political reach to be able to do something like that. So that, as I would say, is a precaution going into this decade in particular, because what I'm trying to show here is that there is a continuous buildup of events that eventually lead to more and more mistrust, loss of empathy between the relationship of the end user, the client, the everyday person who X amount of you going forward are going to look to try to reach out and have them come and be your client, be um, you know your customer base, be your a part of your tribe for whatever your um, product or service is in the, in the industry that you're in. If you are doing things that are questionable, guess what? The word gets out and people can cross tribes, meaning they can cross the different groups and interests that they um, hold and believe in. You're not the only option is the other thing of it too. If you're over there doing questionable things and then denying when certain actions happen in public, but the other competitor, the other Me Too business is up front and is doing their best to have um, the most interaction and, and, uh, and show empathy towards their end user, guess who's going to win for that bottom dollar? That's at least how I'm looking at it, All right? So do, going into the next one. All right, so back into the crypto verse, right? Um, what is this, 2015 to like 2017. There was a period where all you had to say was, I'm gonna use blockchain and I got this white paper and there was a whole slew of copy and paste white papers out there. There were lawyers, and I'm not even gonna give cities and states, but I know, no, there were lawyers who were charging like 2,500 to tell people that their ICO would be regulatory compliant, even though the SEEK, the IRS, and none of them were really saying anything publicly or gave any um, kind of guidance in the early days of it, in the first decade. So people were making money hand over fist. You had an idea that looked great at the first front end of it, but then as you moved forward to be like, okay, what's the actual thing? Where is it going to work? What is the actual use case? Then you realize like this was a kindergartner's drawing or the white paper didn't even make sense when you actually read it. And again, this goes to another black eye that we see happen in the space where a fair number of people got scammed into ICO scams. So somebody sets up something on Telegram who has a Twitter group. Hey, my name is, you do the whole thing on the back end of artificial followings and likes and such and such. And it looks like something. Why? Because people think that the more numbers you see, the, the more quote, I guess to say safe it is or the more assured it is, but they don't wanna do the homework part of it. So we go through that whole learning lesson right there, right? That lesson right there, I, I'm gonna call it the fat lip. That's going to be the fat lip for um, the cryptoverse and how just because you had a white paper, people were able to raise thousands to millions of dollars and scam a good number of people who were already in the space, as well as the new people coming into the space. This particular thing itself shows the whole anti-empathy thing, right? And that um, you're a small business. And if you've been in the space long enough and you kind of know what to look for, and you start like looking at teams and who's building the project, you'll start to see certain names move from one thing to the next. If you've been in it long enough, you'll know how to start looking through. But in the general, again, as a small business, 
if you are picking people to come on board to help you build your project, you're building that team, you got to understand where they came from before they came to you. And if there was anything questionable in what they did before, if they really can do what they are claiming to do for your project, for you being a partner with them, make sure you're able to like vet that, like, and, and clear the air out from the get-go. That's at least my recommendation. Clear the air out from the get-go because once you start pushing stuff out and saying, hey, we're gonna go for funding. Hey, we're gonna start building a community. Someone is going to check. Someone is going to call you out. Hey, isn't that such and such who was attached to this in this project? And if you don't know, Twitter is a real good place to catch people when they said something or po like posted something and they either gave a video or some kind of direct quote. I definitely see coming in this decade, Twitter will definitely be used against a lot of companies and people as, as individuals. Because at some point and sometime, someone posted something that they might have, um, let's say that they wouldn't necessarily agree with later on. We'll put it that way. So that is the whole ICO thing. It's another um, situation. I'm calling that the fat lip for the cryptoverse. And then, of course, as we have heard year for year since um, the Genesis block first starts off, Bitcoin is dead. The memo has been sent out year for year. We're in year 11. So we're more than a decade old and Bitcoin is still the big dog on the block. What does that tell you? Um, memes aren't necessarily always 100% true. They are funny, though. They are... Uh, uh, an indicator to certain um, aspects of certain pockets of a group or groups, right? Because there are the people who they really did think like, all right, after the, the all-time high of 20K, yeah, that Bitcoin thing is dead. I'm not going to mess with it. We lost a lot of people <laughs> during that particular period too, which is like relatively recent. But, you know, in crypto times, it's like dog years, right? Um but we've heard this a number of times. I got to say, it has to be like over a thousand times over the 10 plus years. And I can only imagine what it might be at the end of this year and how people are going to um, refer to Bitcoin being dead. And you got to remember, though, we went from where it was one to where we had over twenty five hundred coins and tokens. And then now I want to say let's say we've like kind of called it down to the actual more workable ones, or at least have a sizable community of where we're under 2k. Cause depending on how you look at it, you could have measured us out in like 2017 at like 3000 coins or tokens. Anyhow, I digress on that one, but going forward, um, that gets us to that whole other thing. Like how many of us heard about the Lambos? It was all about the Lambos in the early part of the um, space in the first decade, right? Where it was the bag chasers, as I call them. And it's the whole thing of, hey, we need to get this money. Hey, we got to um, get these Lambos. Lambos mean that I made it. Lambos means that I'm in the crypto space. And then we had a whole little phase of when it came to the conventions and like the conferences where they would like rent Lambos and put them outside. And this is like, what does that have to do with the tech? How is this helping people? That was my point of view. That was me personally. Other people, you know, hey, like example, right? There's a dude named um, Peter Saddingson. Can't be mad at him. Really smart dude. Um, computer engineer, I believe. Um, but like he did his work. He, under, he learned trading, he did the mining, he worked to um, come up with companies, he did his whole media thing, and yeah, he got a Lambo, but that dude actually did the work for it. There are people who were expecting to just put up a white paper, collect money, make no product, and be like, hey, I'm going to go get a Lambo with the money that these people just gave me. And that's what was happening. Again, this, this I'm not going to say it's a fat lip, but like, mm, Mm, it's like you kind of got the backhand because some people got the Lambo. Most of us didn't get the Lambo. I don't have a Lambo. I'm just going to put that one out there. And so that that's where we are within the crypto space. Like we don't talk about the Lambo thing anymore because the materialism part of it and how it was in the early days isn't cool now. It's a different way that we're moving now, which 
and personally for me, I think that it shows that we've had a level of maturity. There are other things that I'm not a fan of though about it, but I think that that we got past this particular part is a good thing, personally. Um, where are you? There we go. Okay, so now let's get to this man right here. We're gonna say this is the double black eye for the cryptoverse. Okay, this is Carlos, um, da, 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 what is his name? Carlos Matos. And yes, Carlos Matos, this particular, this this is actually from a um, a uh, conference that they had, I think it was in Thailand. And when I tell you the amount of memes and gifts that came out of his particular part of the presentation that like week, it was, it was hilarious through and through for every one of them. BitConnect, um, again, within this whole thing of how are we looking at transparency? How are we looking at showing empathy? How are we looking at building trust, right? The trust factor for the intro was, hey, let's show everyday people. Um, there was Carlos, there was um, um, Javon, um, Tavon, I forgot his last name right now. And there was like two or three other people. Those are the main YouTube faces that you saw. You saw, quote, the everyday regular folk, right? Um, but then you get into where things on the back end, the transparency part isn't being played out. And as I've been saying, these aren't the only examples. There are multiple examples that keep showing that there's a buildup and a buildup of um, mistrust, um, lost in transparency or intentional non-transparency, and then just uh, disregard for empathy. Because when this whole situation finally started like coming out publicly, then it went into the whole thing of um, the people who were promoting it, X amount of them either just disappeared or they were still in the public sphere saying, well, you know, no one told you guys to follow us. What? Huh? How does that work? We believed in you. We trusted you. Again, that trust thing, it's a funny thing how it plays out. Um, this uh, uh, is another example of what I would call like a double black eye for the crypto verse and how people took it. And from that, we get to this right here. Even if you were in this space for a month in like 2016, you went from being Woody to Clint Eastwood. Why? Because there was so much up and down. There was so much volatility. Um, and in this time, in the first decade, especially in the earlier part of it, like we said, you had to go through your bumps. You had to go through your ups and downs um, in order to say, hey, I'm really about this crypto life. Hey, I'm really about this blockchain thing. In this coming decade, how I see it, the people who are coming in um, in this new wave, they don't want or care to have to learn the process. They don't want to care or to have to learn how to go through the struggles. They want to know a zero and a one. Does it work or does it not? If you can't say yes or no to one of those answers for whatever your product or service is, they're not going to waste the time to figure out, oh, well, maybe if I just waited out a little bit longer. Why? With how I kind of see things going forward is there's going to be um, a flood and a flood of businesses. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. I'm gonna actually kind of um, pick up the pace and how I'm moving forward on this. But understand um, first decade, this was what it was. Like you went from being a cartoon, you know, thing to now I'm a hardened like, wild wild west dude like you learned your lesson and you pushed forward the strong hand stayed in and they were clint, East, clint eastwood at the end of it so this young gentleman right here again is a very 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 like spotlight highlight of like empathy and lacking it um he basically had a hedge fund his name is um, um martin um uh, Sicarelli. I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it's S-E-H-E-K-R-E-L-I. And what he did was he had a hedge fund. He ended up taking over a um, company that dealt with a drug that was for AIDS. It was reasonably priced before he took this thing over. He like 100 x it and was just like, hey, it's all about the money. You will have definite opportunities to make money in what you do as pushing a product or a service. Um, the whole thing is, if you're just going to let it be about the bottom line of being what I'm gonna call a bag chaser, like this guy did, the public sentiment 
that will come back from people saying, oh, you're just all about the money and not showing empathy. Literally, it went from like $13 to like over $100 for this drug. And again, another example of you didn't get in trouble when you screwed over the, the little people. You got in trouble when you screwed over the richer people, the, the more well-to-do people, the more connected people. Again, in the public perception, this goes, well, who's the government protecting? Why is this company doing things to take advantage of the smaller person? You're going to end up looking to start a company that will probably be in a position of like um, a vital part of the market. I don't know what the idea is. I haven't spoken to all y'all and I haven't even met you yet. But I imagine that you want someone out there will come up with something that will definitely be of key. If you let the money be the thing to push you to make actions like this guy did, it will come back one way or the other. Why? Because at some point, someone's going to look to call you out on it. And people are um, people are are interesting, to say the least. Again, I'm moving a little bit um, faster on some of these. Oh, this guy right here, Jamie Dimon. Um, another example of he's being trusted because of his position within the U.S. government. He's being trusted because he has a title. He says one thing, and then on the other side, behind closed doors, he does something else. You're going to start your companies. You're going to have to get into this whole thing of public speaking. You're going to have to make announcements. You're going to have to do things to um, say, hey, here's how I understand what's going on within my business. You start making comments on things or start putting things out in public, and then your actions lead the other direction. Be prepared to have someone check you. Whether your company deals in tech, whether it deals in a service, whether it deals in something related to health, if you say one thing in public, be prepared to have someone check you. It will somehow play out down the road. It might happen in the same day. It might happen a month, a year from later, but it will happen. So we get past Jamie Dimon. Then all of a sudden, guess what? Here's Pepe Trump, El Presidente. And there has been no, well, let me not say it. Trump right now sits as one of the most divisive political figures in um, the American context, as far as presidencies go, and then in the global context, right? Where either you love him or you hate him. You're either a Trump supporter, or you're just like, I can't even believe this guy's alive, okay? Um, again, this whole public thing, is how, as far as how we see the transparency, the empathy um, and the trust that's being put out there. It's a weird thing in that some people will take it that, oh, well, you know, he's just telling the truth on what's going on in the government. He was the first person to say, oh, you know, CNN is fake news. Oh, he's calling out, um, you know, things going out within the other different parts of um, the government as far as like the Democrats and the um, Republican stuff. But then he'll say stuff that is like totally historically wrong. It's a weird thing to watch. And for those of you who are outside of the US, I can only imagine what you take it as because those of us here in the States have a hard time trying to understand it too. I know I'm one of them. Pushing forward. Ah, Epstein happens. We hear, depending on how much of the woo-woo news you were paying attention to, you knew about this Epstein thing probably like four or five years ago, if not longer. The bottom line is we get told in the mainstream news, through the different, you know, a government people who talk on the different sources, yeah, this guy kills himself while he was on suicide watch and he broke his neck in a way that you couldn't or wasn't supposed to do if you were on suicide watch. And that's it. And then we've just moved on. Like that's no longer in the news cycle at all. But the memes out there are hilarious because there is so much question of doubt to the official story. Again, you can say things all you want as far as what your official story is, but how much of it do you actually have the end user, that potential client, that customer actually believing what you're saying and trusting in it? Going forward, where are you? Ah, here we go. Again, another example, the news says what they say. This is um, Wolf Blitzer. Um, and I'm not 
picking on CNN in particular, every news agency has their own agenda and how they push and how they frame the information that they give you. This happened to be one that really blew up on um, CNN and the memes. This was like one of the nicer ones, actually. Again, it relays that the public is starting to have a level of distrust that is growing. The, um, the, the what is the word I'm looking for? The transparency part of it, um, again, is, is, is eroding. So where does that leave us? Those of us who are in the crypto um, verse, uh, when it comes to the social contract, we kind of already had our questions and stuff about it, right? And we kind of um, already had this thing of the whole don't trust or like you got to do the verifying part of it. And we keep having more and more examples showing us that, hey, you need to start verifying and validating this thing of trust that you put into a product, a person or a service, whichever. Um, and that brings us to here, right? Where we're just like, everything is a real hard time trying to see the trust. The list is really small. And we still have to push forward though, because we haven't made it to this thing that we've been talking about from day one, which is mass adoption. Those of you who are looking to do your projects and developing them into businesses and develop them probably to like enterprise level, you're gonna have to start from the real base bottom of it build a level of trust that people can validate and verify. And how you're doing that is you're showing the transparency and you're showing the empathy based on whatever your product service is and what market you're in. If you're not doing that, this is how people are gonna look at your company. I don't know if I see the trust in you. I don't know if I believe in what you're doing. Going on to the next. So now what? We realize where we are and how we have an issue um, with trust. And we look at it and we just like kind of, hmm, Yoda it a little bit. Like, what am I seeing? How do I move forward? Bam, 2020 comes into play. Guess what happens? Corona, hold the lemon. It's free for everyone, okay? And this is actually one of the um, nicer um, Corona memes that I have found too. But again, it relays the whole thing of how people are making light of the situation, but there's still truth in the situation. And the, in, the, in the sentiment of the bigger um, society or the bigger, um, the, the, the most smaller um, subculture, right? Corona happens. And now we have to look at a whole new way of how society can possibly develop. Why I bring up the Corona thing is because then we get to this part. Here in the US, we went through this part um, time of all we were getting as far as news, as far as what the government was saying is, oh, everything is okay, don't worry. And now we're what, three months later, two months later, depending on, excuse me, when you had to do your whole shelter in place, depending on what state you were in, what city you were in and stuff. Um, but that December, January, February period, everyone was like, oh no, everything's fine. This is nothing, don't worry about it. And so that's like kind of how the house was burning, but no one was calling it that. And now we get to this where handshakes, fist bumps, you can't do that anymore. Like I've, why, <laughs> you know, part of why I took this too is because I'm a Trekkie too. I'm a Trekkie person. And part of why the name plays out the way it does. But it also just plays into the whole thing of we went from being able to hug. If you know anything about like Italian culture, um, they're, 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 they're kissers. They do the whole full embrace hug stuff. My pop side of the family, they're huggers, right? And we all know somebody who's a hugger. Now, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, how you doing? And like, you give like the, the head nod and stuff now. This may, this seems funny. It's comical. Yes. But in the bigger context of what does it mean for how people are going to now look to interact with one another, where it's, we might not be able, it, it increases the opportunity for doing it where we can communicate and we can talk, but we don't have to be um, in the same space. Um, I really have an issue with the phrase social distancing. Why? Because no one is socially distancing themselves from other people. You're still taking phone calls. You're still seeing your wife or your husband or your kids in the house. You still see your neighbor across the way and you're like, hey, Bob, hey, Susan, hey, Tom. You're still communicating. You're still socializing. This is physical distancing. It is a very, very different thing. And I'm really annoyed that that particular phrase has been taking off. Um, sorry about that rant. But 
again, going to this whole thing of how we're looking at the relationship of the social contract between us, the people and the government, the public, that is us and the government. And we recently just had the whole thing about the, the, the what is it, $6 trillion in the US. Again, the US is not the only com government that is doing the bail-in for the um, corporations and the public. It just so happens that a lot of the spotlight is put on the US government. What do we see happening here? Oh, you're attracted to that um, sexy looking corporate over there. Okay, now what happens? We're laughing, we're looking at memes, we're seeing what's going on around different parts of the world. In the beginning, everything is a joke. The memes were flying like crazy in March. I was in Johannesburg in March and I saw some of the stuff on Twitter that was going on there and even on Facebook. So it was interesting to see. And then to come back to the States and you're just like, mm, this isn't funny anymore. Here we are. This guy right here, one of the people that I've definitely learned a lot from in the space since I got into the cryptoverse, that's Max Kaiser. Um, I don't remember where he actually took this um, picture at, but I believe that the face and his positioning is very relevant to the words. Again, the memes are about a balance of the image and the words and what it is conveying within the, the, the societal um, um, reference. Too big to fail in 2020. What does that really mean? And do you really believe it? Because we are now talking about where up to, what is it? Over 30, 30 million people in the American market do not have a job right now in that they're not working. Not saying that they can't work, but they are not working because that's how much unemployment is being applied for. And that's not even a hard number. That's the number of people who are actually being counted. That's two separate things. So we're talking about a real higher number. Again, it's not just here in the US, but it's also happening in other countries too. Um, but what does that really mean in this context? We are going to find out. One of the things that I've been trying to tell people about this whole COPIV, what I call the COPIV, is we don't understand what the actual market behavior is for the clients and consumers yet because we haven't had enough time to settle in on what it means when you have a overwhelming majority of your people unemployed and you have to close X amount of your businesses. We don't know that yet. We won't figure that out. We won't feel it and see it until probably towards like the fourth quarter. So around that like fall Christmas time. Um, and the point going into this thing for you being a small business is that you're going into a new era. You're going into a new um, environment. And I'm going to jump through to the money go burr because that's what we thought. Well, we can just print our way out of it. No, that's not going to work. Again, we see the example of, hey, the government didn't look out for us. The corporate folks were greedy because the PPP money that was of the $6 trillion did not go to small businesses. And small businesses are definitely like really trying to figure out how to make it. That's where the majority of the labor or workforce is in the US in particular. Jumping forward again, people are getting mad. Small businesses are getting mad because it was like, hey, you said you were gonna, it was about us. Well, eh, not really. It was about us, the risk folks. That's kind of how it's playing out. That's the sentiment that's being taken away. So now when we see the government doing things and we see big businesses doing things because you had big businesses who weren't essential companies changing some of their stuff in order to be considered an essential company. We look at everything like a brother sister relationship. Now we are questioning, we are measuring, we are giving it the second eye to be like, wait a minute. Is that really fair? Is that really e um, even? This is how your potential clients are gonna start looking at you when you say, hey, I have this blockchain product and it's gonna be like um, digital identity. It'll be something within health. It'll be some kind of financial product. Guess what? As a small business, you're walking into this thing going, oh, I got this, Corona happens. Now you have to readjust and figure out how are you surviving in this? What is your core business? Does your revenue model, does your business model, does your product or service have a um, have validity, have a market fit in this environment? Now that we are talking about, example, if you were a digital nomad, how does a digital nomad business model work right now? How long will it be before a digital nomad who goes around and takes pictures of things and talks about restaurants and foreign places and different eateries, how does their business model even work right now? You can't go anywhere. 
that's just one example. Um, I'm not saying that that's what you guys are out there, that that's what you're going to be doing. But just to put it in perspective, what was a absolute like that would be a money thing a year ago is not guaranteed to be one a year from now because we still haven't figured out what is the actual um, client um, customer behavior relationship. And I'm going to end up closing it out on this one in that what is about to happen is when the the behavior starts to settle in when people start to get that okay unemployment is this high i can't go back to that job anymore i have to upskill myself to something new we're going to start moving into that whole remote work thing businesses and companies or well, companies and individuals there is going to be a flood that follows in in this decade which means that the the noise of what you had to do as a business as an employee as a potential um, um, product or service provider went from here to now it's here. You thought it was hard before to figure out how to use social media and how to have your website build and how to do the whole traffic thing. Imagine what it's gonna be like when you take, let's say, what, 100,000, 200,000 unemployed people globally and then tell them they can now get into the digital workforce space because why? You can do remote work for X amount of your core service businesses. You are now in a new global competition as a me too business. Are you doing a product, shirts, hats, sneakers, shoes? Are you doing a technology, a software? Where are you getting your um, developers from? Where are you getting your graphic designers from? You can outsource all of that now. The noise for competition just went from your state, your city, your coast, your region to global. You've now 100x out what the noise is. How are you going to stand out and be different from those other Me Too businesses that you are now competing with globally? That's my whole point about this thing of I don't trust you. We've had a continuous number of events that keeps reiterating to people that trust and empathy and transparency is not being given to us by the government for whatever region you're in to varying degrees and the big businesses. So you coming in this space as a small business, as a mom and pop level business, as an entrepreneur, as a solopreneur, you now have to work against that backdrop. You now also have to compete with the other 2000 plus people who have a either exact idea as you or a very similar idea as you and you're all going to be in the digital space competing for eyeballs and attention how are you differentiating yourself you have to do something that validates your the, the trust that people are going to put in in you and your product your service and in connecting with your brand and i'm gonna leave it on that again my name is trek with two k's i'm sorry i ran a little bit long um, but I hope you got where I was going and I hope that you do, um, take into, you know, cognition, like it's going to be a different landscape in this coming decade and pay attention to the memes. Cause they're going to tell you some real interesting things. All right. Sorry about that. Thank you so much, Jack. Wow. This is kind of those wow presentation. I listened the whole hour. Thank you so much for that. So guys, if you have any questions, I will now will allow you uh, to unmute your microphone. Please go ahead and mute. And we also, if you, if you didn't post your Discord ID in the chat, please do so because we would like to identify that you were present at this uh, workshop and award you with uh, voting power. So please go ahead, post your Discord in the uh, Discord ID in the chat and also unmute your microphone for the questions. And I'm going to see the questions on the um, Zoom chat. Yeah, if you would like to also, you can post your question on the Zoom chat. If you don't want to speak, you know, that's that's fine too as well. Um, is it a question for me, uh, like, where do you go and find memes? Like, is there any... Oh man. Yeah. So, okay. So the meme thing is funny, right? Um, generally it's just going into your browser so you can Google it, you can duck, duck, go it, and you just type the meme, but then you have now that there's websites that are literally dedicated to just generating memes for you. So you have apps and then 
or like you have the workarounds um, kind of platforms where you can do something where um, you take InShot, for example, you'll make um, a screenshot of something you saw online on your phone and then go into InShot and just add in the text, right? Add in the copy. The funny thing about memes are, is that it, it's an interesting balance because I've been playing around with it for a couple of weeks where you can, you can definitely reuse images over and over again. But the words, the caption, like that's the part that drives it home for people some, like most of the times, I would say most of the times. I don't know what that hard number is, but I would say definitely most of the time, that's what drives it home for people when they you know, are able to um, have a, a good balance of the words. And sometimes it's, I've seen ones where like the text is really long, but when you read it and then you're like, oh wow, like, that's really like, that's exactly how I feel about that. Or that makes so much sense. And then I've seen other ones where it might be like three words and you're just like, yep, yeah, that's right to the point. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, I, like I said, I think that with what Googly did for buying Giphy, um, Jiffy, Jiffy, yeah, the Jiffy. Um, I think what they did with that goes to show there's definitely um, going to be a, a new step up or a new wave that, or a new awareness or consciousness that will be um, displayed in memes and gifts because they would not have spent the money for that in order to get the data to analyze it because it's all about analyzing the data and being able to understand the, the public sentiment and gifts and memes are a very good example of those things and then they're damn near in like near real time especially when something goes viral like at least that's how i, I i'm interpreting it let's say it that way got it thank you thank you so much yes yeah, so after this i will try to go and find all this the memes because only people who introduced me to it that was my kids probably yeah so these are these who, who paying attention to everything mm -hmm. that's going on yes and they maybe we are getting too busy with our business and we not look this way you're absolutely right another thing i want to throw in there real quick um the other thing that it shows me with what google did was um and i forgot which one of the slides it was but if you have a good content creation person, memes can be an effective tool in swaying people's positions on stuff. Um, as far as like marketing, let's say goes, and I have a whole nother theory about marketing stuff, but if you can get something to go viral, memes are definitely an interesting tool. And I think will be used a lot more in ways that people didn't think of in the first decade. Awesome. We well, need to pay attention to it. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, you are welcome to unmute your microphones. I hope that I enable it. Yes, I enable this possibility for you. Yes, please. Juliana? Yeah, hello. I've got a uh, question here. Trek, you mentioned um, individual competitiveness in a, a global scale uh, for the trust. Do you see any um, mechanism, technology, or ideas to survive in this flood you mentioned? So, okay. Um, mechanism wise, let me see if I'm, if I'm understanding it right, you're saying like, what could you use as a tool to be able to enhance your trust with your that's client, yeah that could be I, I don't know any uh, uh, solutions uh, that could be uh, software technology or maybe uh, policy uh, humanity policy or ethics wherever uh, just your uh, opinion on this <clears throat> huge huge flood of uh, uh, globalization actually uh, and competitive uh, fight uh for get trust individually okay so hmm. software wise i can't say i can think of a software that's gonna like just 
somehow magically help you build the trust, right? Because like the trust is more of a, this A and B equals trust. It's not a trust by itself just happens to magically grow. Um, in that, the, so, all right. If you are a business as, um, bum, 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 bum. all right. You're a blockchain business and you're looking to deal within the healthcare space um, and transparency. Um, we have it that, and I'm saying me as a, as a company, transparency as I want to have my um, software for digital identity that is blockchain based be the thing that all the hospitals use. Transparency in, in this particular scenario, as I'm framing it, would be, hey, let me let the, um, and you have two type of users. You have the hospital network as the user, where it's, hey, here's what you can do. And you're telling them, you know, all of the features that they would need to be aware of and how it would help them. And then you have the, um, the end user being actually like the patient. For them, it's what are the benefits and why, right? But now let's say on the back end, something happens where some new regulation changes where, um, and this is one of the things that like messed up Mountain Gox. The um, AMA, AML stuff changed um, on the back end. And then the company that they were dealing with then messed up their accounts by freezing them, but they weren't telling the public that. So that transparency thing of like, hey, this is what's going on. Let me let you know as my end users so that you know if something um, is affecting you negatively, I'm trying to run ahead of it. That is what builds the trust and being consistent with that. So I'm not saying like, oh, go out as a business and if you have like um, propriety technology, go out and just tell everything. That's not what I'm saying at all. Plus, like, way illegal, right? But it's if there are things that can come up to negatively affect the end user, you would be best advised to figure out how to, to how to let them know ahead of time, or at least let them know what's going on. So when they start going through this, wait, what's going on? Why am I having this negative experience with something that I put a level of trust in? you can then calm down like the discontent and the disconnection that they're feeling and say, hey, here's what's going on. Like the communication factor and like all of it boils down to communication. If you're not having an effective communication, it doesn't matter how fancy your technology is. If you aren't effectively communicating what's going on to um, subdue people's um, 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 on feeling, feeling on, on easy, it doesn't matter how big or how fancy your tech stuff is because you aren't even communicating effectively anyway. So that's really just you wasting money. Like the easier thing would have been, hey, like I'll give you another example of something. And I remember when I first said this, um, X amount of people didn't take me seriously when I first said it. I was like, wow, you can use medium as an easy enough way to be like your company blog. So when stuff happens, you can push it out there and say, hey, we just um, you know, put out a new thing for the quarter that's letting you know what's, excuse me, what's been going on with the company, right? So you have that as your, as your, your green tail um, content, it's always there. And then you use Twitter as you're like, hey, here's the real time stuff of what's going on right now. Like yesterday, this thing changed. We're actually sitting around the um, table right now trying to figure out how is this going to affect our business and what is it going to mean for you as the client? By the end of the week, you write out the article that gave the updates of what those day things were. And then you write out like, here's how we're going to move forward. That's always going to be there on Medium. And you were giving people a real time transparency while all of that was going on. That's one of the things I think a lot of people um, don't understand about how you can use Twitter in combination with other platforms. Just a thought. 
Thank you. Yes, I, we know that, I noticed that we use, uh, for example, all the social media the same way, probably conveying the same message to all ones, but never, it never occurred to me that it's actually different audience and different platforms, different, I mean, different messages that had to be conveyed on them. Thank you for that. All right, guys, all right. if, if you have any a, other questions. Oh, yes, please, Carl. There, might, there might really be an interesting business model. And, you know, Juliana, you might consider this in your uh, remarkable vision. Um, and many of you probably know what an oracle represents in blockchain. It's a source of information, basically, that, that blockchain contracts can refer to to find out if something happened or how hot it is in Timbuktu or whatever. Um, and so... Uh, trust or reputation oracles could be really interesting. Either making them or using them. Agreed. Like, again, on that tech side of it, if you've been around for a while, like you look at this whole thing now and you're like, the binary black and white that we initially promoted in the public narrative in the first decade is from how I see things going now is being pushed back. And the, the maturity in regards to like, hey, blockchain is really a sliding scale. I mean, I know we were promoting it as a black and white thing before, but there's that far left, far right. How far from the left of being totally open source to all the way to the right of being um, totally, you know, um, copy protected IP level stuff and oracles play into that. Like the centralization of certain hardwares and service and softwares is going to be a part of it. Like we're just not there to be like, Hey, everything can just be disconnected because the whole basic idea was how much of the human element can we remove from this? Because that's the variable, right? If you make a software, it either works or it doesn't. You make a hardware, it works or it doesn't. Human beings, we a whole nother animal. We are a whole nother construction. Sometimes we might work, sometimes we might not. We might do it halfway, we might do it all to the best. Like, that's us though. Yeah, I think the whole, the whole issue of trustless transactions it's the whole terminology is really strange. That means I can really trust this transaction because I don't have to trust the other party. Um, and then the whole thing about being using pseudonyms or being anonymous, uh, you know, the transactions are completely transparent, but are they connected with your reputation? If so, then they're connected with your name or your, and if you avoid that, you can't build reputation. It's very interesting. I'll give you another one that's a real irony to me, right? So you have the people who will argue with you like, well, you know, I already have a banking system now. Like I have Chase and Bank of America and blah, 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 and Cash App. And they'll be like, that's trusted. Like everyone uses it. And it's like, well, no, it's not trusted because your idea of trust is, is that you're in an environment that says you have this convenience of a service, but unbeknownst to you because of how the rules work on the back end, they can deny you that service. Like I, I literally had a conversation the other day with somebody who really tried to tell me if they put their money in the bank, it's their money and the bank has to give it to them. And I just had to shake my head and kind of walk away. It's like, you really just don't understand how this stuff works. And I understand why you don't, I'm not mad at you. It's just, I'm sad for how you're going to find out that that's not how it works. Uh, uh. There's likely yeah. to be a lot of that finding out here in the next few years because of the exactly. economy <laughs> turned up, uh, it's upside down on its head. Very hard to predict the future. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Trek, you for so your much. amazing, amazing presentation. Thank you. So, uh, guys, we have today uh, later on, and that for you who are on the different time zones, it probably will be tomorrow, and maybe we hours, maybe morning. So, for you, it's uh, 8 p.m. EDT, which uh, sorry, 8 p.m. EDT, which is 12 a.m. UTC. We're going to have Angela Chan uh, with a hacker mindset presentation for you. Also, please pay attention to our website, soshackathon.com. We have our keynote speeches coming up. So Vitalik Buterin is going to be talking about uh, digital communities on Ethereum. Um, uh, ben Gordzel, who is inventor of Robert Sophia AI, so he will be talking about 
uh, longevity and democracy via the decentralized AI as well. And we also have Paul Brody from Ernst & Young. So he will be talking about privacy uh, for the business applications. We also put in together a panel on the digital communities uh, because we are running us as a digital community. Amber, um, Scott is uh, putting together the panelists. Uh, Vitalik Buter and Ben Gorzel will be on this panel. So we also put in other panelists on this talk. We will be bringing more keynote speakers, more workshops as well. So please uh, stay, pay attention. If you go to our website, to the dates, there is a calendar here so that you can uh, look into and see what are the events coming up so you would not miss any. Uh, at 11 a.m. on Friday, we're going to be actually having a opening ceremony we're going to be inviting another keynote speaker to it and we're also going to be doing a community dance uh we we right now also recruiting the singers to do so so to to have something some very fun component of it so prepare for it uh if you have any questions you still can do so um uh, otherwise i will see you a little bit later today for another I workshop i want to mention Thank that anybody that's yes. uh brave to uh, wander into the central land. We have a uh, Saturdays and Sundays, we have dancing in the cafe at the conference center, uh, 5 p.m. UTC on Saturdays and 10 p.m. UTC on uh, Sundays. So there's a dance coming up here in a few hours. Um, we have a, a DJ that plays live uh, from the from this meeting center. You just head kind of south and a little bit east and you'll get to the to the patio and cafe where the where the dancing is or you can go to the conference center website and get the link directly to the the dance it's in a different so realm in, so. in in here if you guys are wondering how to do it it's in uh, dclconf.com uh you will you will see a whole bunch of uh, pictures on this website which is when you click on the picture, it will lead you directly to the place that you want to come. So, and this is the dance stage. So there's Patio and Unity Cafe. This is where, where the dancing is holding. That's what Carl is talking about. So you can just click on this picture and be right there. All right, thank you so much. Thank you everyone. I really appreciate you joining us tonight and we'll see you later today. Thank you. <laughs>